In this economy, who can afford an expensive haircut or a four-year degree? Soft Lake Community College, barbering and cosmetology school, an unlicensed salon. Let me give you a haircut. I really need the practice. Our degrees are two years and our haircuts are two dollars. Men's cuts, only two dollars. Barbering and cosmetology school. Your herd is only limited by your imagination and how far along we are in this semester. May I cut your hair? I won't mess up, and even if I do, it's only two dollars. Barbering and Cosmetology School Let me shave your face. Now featuring the pre-mission special, two haircuts for four dollars. Guaranteed for two years. Salt Lake Community College Barbering and Cosmetology School an unlicensed salon. Let us cut your hair. That was a uniquely uh, Utah ad, I think. Um, by the way, just a little a bit about these ads. We thought it'd just be something to bring us all into the room, kind of give you a, a, an idea that we're about to start. So we thought, let's find some truly local um, small business videos. And these are actually all real small business ads. Some of them seem like parodies, but they're in fact for real businesses around the, the country. And uh, that's hard to believe looking at a few of them, but I thought you'd find them a little bit amusing. So anyway, uh, thanks for coming to this uh, session. What we're, I don't want you to let, let the uh, title of this session fool you, the view from the CTO's office. I know that sounds like a barn burner, the CTO's office. But in fact, these are two very dynamic uh, uh, people in this industry in involved more in sort of the serious strategic business decisions than they are in strictly a technology role. Those roles are much more expansive, much more important to the enterprise. So we're talking today with uh, two leaders from two uh, major directory organizations in the world, YP and YPG in Canada or Yellow Media. And uh, we're going to walk through a series of sort of statements that will frame our conversation. And joining me is uh, uh, my colleague Warren Kay, and we're going to be uh, talking to our two guests, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Why don't we start with you, Paul? Uh, Paul Ryan, I'm Scorpio. Does that matter? No. Uh, I'm the CTO of Not your match profile, but the. Uh, yeah, the okay. <laughs> well, you never know. Uh, so I'm the CTO of YPG, which is the Yellow Pages of Canada. Uh, you know, your typical, not typical, but a hundred year old directory business, which was a spell, uh, spin off of the telcos. Been there around a year and a half. Uh, I went up there, I was in Southern California and I moved to Montreal. So that shows my commitment in terms of uh, transformation. Yellow Media is obviously a directory company in the midst of a print to digital transformation like everyone else. And uh, we're incredibly successful at that. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that we're doing uh, to help that. Prior to that, I've, I've done a variety. This is a first big company experience in quite a long time for me because I've been a startup guy for. I don't know, since 99. Uh, I was at Overture with Darren. We worked together there. Uh, and then I was at Yahoo for a little bit, Microsoft for a little bit. I founded uh, Dunright with Matt Booth. And we did that for a bit and a variety of other roles. A lot of Dunright veterans at this conference. Yeah, there are. I mean, we were way ahead of our times in terms of a paper call business using print and online to generate leads, which is kind of the of direction of the industry right now. So mm -hmm. it's good to see that we were ahead of the times. It's bad to see that we were too far ahead of the time. Um, and so I'm looking forward to having a great discussion about this. Okay. Darren, tell us. Uh, Darren Clark. I'm the CTO of YP. I have responsibility for product management, product development, um, all the engineering as well as uh, business development. I've been with YP going on five years now in October. Wow. Um, and uh, prior to that I worked at a startup called Spotrunner. Uh, before that I was at Yahoo and Overture for about five years. Um, so fan of the space and um, looking forward to this conversation. Okay, great. Uh, I'm just going to set it up very quickly with a few bullet points, uh, debatable perhaps, but sort of what is the, the situation for a traditional media seller today? That will help sort of frame 
uh, sort of the situation that th these companies find themselves in. And we're talking about, you know, two large organizations with large sales channels, legacy print business shifting rapidly to a primarily digital business. Uh, what that means is there's an expanding product portfolio, so that creates a lot of challenges. How do you efficiently sell multiple products uh, through a sales force that, you know, originally was selling one, perhaps two? Uh, that's an old statement, but it continues to be a challenge. Um, the core product that uh, has provided most of the cash over the years, the declines, uh, at least industry-wide, different companies have different experiences, but industry-wide that's an accelerating rate of decline. I think in particularly this year it's been uh, accelerating at an even faster pace. Um, and I think a big question we're going to get into is this whole idea of how do you get past being in an organization built around an annual selling cycle? when all the products that are really going to drive the business in the future have no connection to that at all. Um, and how do you sort of move off of si old systems that are, you know, built for the last war, you know, built for that annual cycle? You know, how do you make that technology shift? And fair to say you both have cultures that, at least in some corners, mourn the past. They're wishing things were, were the way they were instead of trying to understand where, where, what you need to do to go forward. Now that doesn't describe everyone but they're, that exists within all legacy organizations. And so how do you ch overcome that challenge? So these are some of the things these folks are, are dealing with and some of the things we're going to talk about. And so how this is going to work is, um, that was a bottle of water, no problem. Um, we're going to put statements up here that they may agree or disagree with but they're going to sort of use them as uh, conversation starters. They're assertions that we're going to debate and uh, we'll sort of take it from there. And then uh, before I forget to mention it, uh, use the hashtag uh, SMBQ and I will try to keep an eye on, uh, on your questions on my little iPad mini here and uh, so keep them coming and, and after we're sort of into the conversation a bit, I'll uh, keep an eye off, off your questions. Or at any time really, just throw your hand up and somebody's got to have a mic here and we'll, they'll come get you and let you ask your question. We want this to be pretty open and, and interactive. So let's get started. Charles, okay. Does, does the question, do, yeah. do I raise my hand too? Sure. Does, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I'm actually really fascinated by this panel because um, here are two CTOs who are not traditional CTOs. And so before we get into a lot of the discussion around your businesses and, and, and the, the kind of the practical um, discussion that we want to have, I'm curious just to start the discussion around the role of the CTO. Um, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but um, in a, a fairly short period of time, more marketing decisions and more marketing spend is going to come out of the CTO CIO office than it is the CMO office. Darren, your role. Uh, we're, and, and we're really okay with that. As, as you should be, because <laughs> a lot idea. of the, the marketing decisions are technology driven, mm -hmm. whether it's the back office marketing automation tools or whether it's the products that you put out or and the, the partnerships. Or the partnerships yeah. and, and the integration of them. Absolutely, it's mm -hmm. all of that. And, um, and I, I actually had some crossover in our overture days as well, and I was on the business side, and I remember. Yeah, is this like a reunion or something? It is a little bit of a reunion, <laughs> oh. yeah, exactly. But there was always this major tension of, hey, we go, the business team goes out and does a business deal, and then we bring in the technology team, and for all the right reasons. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> and figure it out, yeah, well, they'll figure it out, exactly. And for all the right reasons, th those lines have, have now gone away or are going away in most successful, well-run organizations. You both have responsibilities for product and, and other areas besides just getting it done after the business team. So I'm curious, you, you've, you've been in this industry for a while, your roles have evolved. Can you talk a little bit about that evolution and, and what you're seeing broadly in the industry and then as well as your own organizations? Absolutely. I mean, for, it was especially true, that old kind of construct with the CMO and the technology guys when we were part of AT&T. Yeah. AT&T kind of, you know, all things product live in marketing and then really they, they didn't even really think of engineering. It was more about IT, right? right? And so that was always a struggle for us. Luckily we were kind of an island within AT&T and we had a lot of autonomy. But especially since leaving AT&T, we've, we've done a lot to kind of take all the loops out of the product planning and product decision making by putting that all underneath kind of the, the product and technology stuff underneath one leader. And it's allowed us to go a lot faster and it's allowed us to kind of uh, move, move it with, I'd say, kind of a better view on both capabilities and not just market opportunities. So that's, it's that's a great way to put it. It's, um, yeah. it's been good for us so far. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty interesting because both at YPG and YP, there's a CTO and a CIO. Yep. Right. Okay. So the CIO at YPG is responsible for primarily the back office and everything you would think about for a large corporation. Whereas the CTO is more focused, I'm not talking to my, about myself in the third person, I'm more <laughs> focused 
on kind of the products and the, uh, fr from a consumer point of view, but also from an advertiser point of view, the technologies we need to actually push those forward. So that, that's an interesting acknowledgement that the role, the consolidated role of a technology executive has completely changed. That's right. And it's always been that way. It's very funny. If I think back to like 2001, 2002, exactly the, your example at Overture is exactly right. We'd come up with interesting paid search implementations and people would run over and say, okay, go implement this. And I said, well, we, we can't do that. So we, we had to build teams of engineers and, and product folks that would work within the marketing organization. And the boundaries became very, very blurred. Right. It was just kind of one big team that was interested in partnership implementations since Overture was mainly a syndication play. And the same sorts of things are happening at YPG because we, and a little bit slower, but we're, we have a syndication strategy as well. And I'm using that same pattern uh, where you just have the engineers. Well, in Canada, you actually can't call yourself an engineer unless you have an engineering certification and it has right. something to do with the railroads or something. So <laughs> what, do, what yeah. do they call them? Developers. Okay. Yeah. And I don't particularly like that. It's better than coders, right? I mean, yeah. uh, anything's better than that. But uh, so yeah, so that, that there's an acknowledgement of that in that bifurcation of responsibility. Yeah. Well, and we in particular on this stage or at BIA Kelsey, we talk a lot about um, digital transformation in terms of salespeople and in terms of customers. And I think this panel is a great opportunity and I wanted to frame it up for this audience that this is the digital transformation from the technology, marketing and product side which is just as important and in some cases maybe even more important than what's happening on the front lines that internally how companies are organized and um, organizations transforming themselves into a digital era is as much about what these two gentlemen um, bring to their organizations from a holistic view as what a salesperson might bring from a combined print um, digital offering into their customer. But you're also involved a lot with how the sales force is Absolutely. transforming. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I spend as much time with our, our head of sales right, as, as I do with, with my own team mm -hmm. in terms of really helping him to drive that cultural transformation, giving them the tools and the perspective on the market. And the thing I'd say at YP especially is, that, is there's a lot of hunger and energy for it. You know, we're 40% uh, digital company now and it's going to be more than that by the end of the year so when you have that kind of shift going now it, it used to be for the rep that <clears throat> the digital product was the fries to go with the hamburger right and now if you if you look at it it's really becoming kind of a main entree mm -hmm. and so it's it's they know that they have to make this change there's a lot of hunger and willingness and you're seeing these guys um, educate themselves going out and, and, and really learning the space and so I, I think there's a I think we've got a good shot at turning that corner. Okay. Yeah, I mean the sales transformation is actually one of the, everyone talks about the sales channel, the feed on the street. We have like 1,100 sales reps in Canada, which is for Canada. I mean it's a lot of people out there talking to all. How many people are in Canada again? Um, 38 million <laughs> <Sorry>. roughly. <laughs> it's around, it's around. I'm joking. Keep it's, going. <laughs> don't get me started. Uh, so it's around a tenth of the size of the U.S. Think of California as kind of a, a proxy. Uh, and so putting the right tools in their hands so that they can actually sell the right products is incredibly important. We're around 45% digital right now, uh, trending to 50-50 by the end of the year. So it, they're able to sell this stuff, but I think one of the questions, the cultural yeah. change that you're talking about here is that the directory business historically was always a yearly business. And what was fast, what's fascinating to me about a yearly business is the advertisers kind of got used to that it lulled them into this sense of I need to think about marketing decisions once a year mm -hmm. because their primary marketing decision was their ad in the yellow pages and then they try a few other things during the year to see if they work. Now that's their mentality where it was a very, very low involvement product. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what's amazing to me it. is this is, I don't know, the, the, the hundredth Kelsey conference I've been to. I mean, I, it seems like that. But 10 <laughs> years ago. 1974, yeah. Yeah, but 10 years ago we were talking about the exact same things, right? The low involvement SMB. You've got to package products for them so that they understand them. I mean, I, I, I couldn't even get away from it. I was sitting, I went back to the Sheraton last night since I signed up late for this. Uh, and there was some guy that sells aftermarket, um, you know, auto parts and like auto stereo systems. And he says, well, what do you do? Uh, well, I work for the Yellow Pages in Canada and he just went nuts. 
He's like, they got my ad wrong, and I used to be able to just go to them, and I get a lot of business. Why isn't it that way now? You know, and I'm just like, uh, I don't know. I'm in Canada, man. That's Darren's fault. <laughs> Beautiful. Thanks. Actually, I think he is your customer. You didn't give him my phone number, did you? No, I did. I gave him your card. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so it's the same issues. Low involvement, SMBs, they want you know, high ROI, perceived ROI, whatever ROI, if mm -hmm. they can figure it out. And so that led to a culture within YPG, and I think directory businesses at large, you get to talk to them once a year, maybe twice a year, you kind of touch them a few touch points, and that's about it, and they write the big check and you move on. That permeates every function in a corporation. Right from billing to customer service to, sure. uh, it's, it's the pace of change. Mm -hmm. It's how quickly do you need to react to problems, right? Because right. if the directory's printed and it's gonna be printed you know, in, again in six months, that is a completely different time scale than the digital landscape. And I think people underestimated, you know, when every, this transformation to digital media for the Yellow Pages has been going on at least for a decade. Everyone saw this, right? Yeah. Everyone saw it coming, but people underestimated the inertia of large organizations to actually rapidly change. I mean, this is fundamentally the innovator's dilemma, right? We're, we're seeing it over and over again, whether it be Microsoft, whether it be, you know, the yellow pages, the incumbent, you know, that did everything in there. I mean, we were the most efficient publisher in the world from a print publishing point of view. And that, all of that technology and expertise and how people work together is somewhat irrelevant. Right. You're, you're now. being a, a very efficient thing that no well, one Well, very efficient thing that, you know, the, I'm getting yelled at because it has a defect rate that's not zero, mm -hmm. right? Because now we're assuming the traditional media has a zero defect rate. Right. Because in the digital world, you can change it tomorrow. Right. Right. right? And that's what they get used to. So, so, Darren, you've been at YP for five years. Describe the evolution over the five years in, in cultural change. I mean, has it been. Well, you just tell me, how, yeah. how has it changed? Well, what, you, know, you figure when I first got there, digital revenue was maybe one-sixth, maybe one-eighth of, of the, the total you, revenue. Right on Colorado above the above J. J. Crew. J. Crew, yes, in Pasadena. Yeah, the J. Crew I wasn't, store. actually, they moved, but yeah. don't, don't get me off track. Okay. Um, <laughs> but in the beginning, you know, uh, we, we started out, and a lot of the problems were really kind of considered to be, you know, uh, more around rep efficiency, but it was all about trying to kind of tune the legacy infrastructure to work for digital. Mm -hmm. And that was a really hard battle to get people past. If you, if you look at the kind of the thrusts we're making now to drive rep productivity, it's, we're going around all that legacy stuff, right? We're figuring out how to orchestrate where we need to with the, with the legacy canvas model and those things. But we're really investing, you know, we're not investing any money there. We're not, we're not touching that thing. We're mm -hmm. really trying to drive all of our investment into making sure that these guys have great decision support, great mm -hmm. automation around this. And the point on the service model, we, we touch a lot of our customers now every month now. Mm -hmm. Right? performance management of their digital campaign, making sure they understand what's happening. And, and we're getting to the point to where you know, over half of our digital revenue is going to be in kind of that, that and it's not high touch, it's an automated service model mm -hmm. yeah. right, that allows us to kind of manage their expectations. And you kind of remind case. them that, hey, you're spending money with us. And, and you're getting a great ROI and, and things are working. here's what happened and stuff like that and get them to open the email or um, right. open Darren, the is text. a good metaphor you're building a new house while still living in the old house? Yeah. You? Well, the, we started out with a guest house and uh -huh. now the guest house is getting bigger than the old house we used to live in. So from, just from a, so in the online universe, content is king, right? So we had all these revenue out there clicking all this great information and generating these display ads uh, and then they'd sell a contract and there'd be a product there and we'd have, it would be attached to some listings and the minute the product expired, all that content was white. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. <laughs> Believe it or not. Uh, and so it's like, wow, so how in the world do you have a digital online presence if every time you collect information and a contract expires, you have to start over? But that was the print model. I mean, so this is an example of a process that's just completely insane. Why would you ever give up rich information about a business? But it's like, you printed the directory, you're done. Yeah. And yeah. they get to update it all next year. And so that's the sort of, when, when I, I think it was at the beginning of 2012 when I started at YPG, just looking at kind of the common problems, the number one complaints was changing information about the advertisers on our online publication. You, you look at actually what's going on there, and it's like, holy shit, why in the world is this stuff disappearing? And you say, uh, content management, it's an interesting topic, maybe we need to talk about it. So kind of the infrastructure to be mm -hmm. able to do digital publishing was kind of the first job at YPG. And we've been working on it now for a year and a half, 
uh, the whole track of business, but fundamentally you don't give up the gold. I mean, we're a listing provider for Canada, for Google, for Yahoo, and, and whatever, and we were just completely not treating that as a strategic position in the marketplace, but it's flipped around. That is our position in the marketplace. We know about all the businesses. And if we have 1,100 or you know, 2,000 people in total talking to businesses, every time we talk to them, we're gonna grab that data and continue yeah. to publish it. Yeah. So that, that's a complete different mindset from a physical asset to a digital asset. That's right. So how does, um, if you look at some of the LCM data that we just published, you see that uh, directory, both online and offline directory usage is declining. And I think that that's a, uh, a, a large factor of um, the, the old mindset of we're just going to take our print products and put them online. And because we are who we are, consumers will start to use them. Um, you showed me the, the new YP app. It's a very different experience than a directory product. Um, how, how, how are you all looking at product development, product innovation, consumer experience um, to try to, to give them the experience that they're looking for? Because frankly, in a lot of ways, as a consumer, my local needs are still not being met. Mm -hmm. I, I still don't find and, and get what I want on a local level. And um, Paul, to your point, the, the Yellow Pages have all the data. You, you more than anyone have the information there. It's just how you present it and create the right products. Yeah. So how, how are you all planning your products well, I mean, and development? Just, just on the traffic piece, I mean, we, we're seeing about 20% year-over-year growth on of your direct, our, on of your of online our online of the online property. Right. Yeah. The mobile website is gangbusters, you yeah. know, well over 100% of year growth. And then if you look at the, the apps, the footprint there is also growing as well pretty fast. So, you know, with, with the YP network, more than half of that's owned and operated. Some of that's uh, through our distribution relationships. It's over 60 million uniques a okay. month. So, Great. so we're, we're privileged and, and you know, fortunate that we've made an investment there longer than anyone else, and, and we have sure. a growing traffic position right. um, with small business or yeah. with the uh, local audiences. At Which an is, industry level, that's not necessarily true. That's, that's the industry is not correct. true, and would you, I guess, are you also suggesting that the experience, like, do you feel good about the experience? Do you feel like there's innovation that still needs to happen, or, or where are you in that continuum? We, we've made huge investments, so if you look at, you know, my, my head of, uh, of the consumer engineering and product is out here, uh, Sanjay Sood, he's, you know, this guy's a, a PhD in uh, computer science information retrieval. We've made huge investments in kind of being able to curate the best data, in rolling our own search stack, in, in content acquisition, and those sorts of things. So. We've been at this for three or four years. We bake off against all the major online properties and, and are in the air bars with the best and well ahead of most of our, our competition from a relevance and data quality standpoint. Okay. So we have been making this investment. We think that's why we're getting tra treated well from an SEO standpoint and a traffic standpoint. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do, it, so, so from YPG, it's my largest team, consumer experience. Okay. So we have, there's lots of people, the Yellow Pages uh, you know, typically went for the horizontal app first, right. which is kind of like solve everyone's questions and accelerate it a bit directory. by, yeah, yeah, kind of a directory right. with, with uh, pretty standard directory consumer experience. Yes. But we also, uh, so we've gone not only that and with good content there, but more of a vertical strategy as well. Because, I, you know, I'm not, uh, we're, we're probably not young enough to be the digitally connected people um, but understanding what will delight the user, especially, uh, you know, uh, Generation Y and beyond, uh, you know, you're going to have to come up with lots of really cool engaging experiences. So our strategy fundamentally is we have the data, we understand everything about these businesses, and we're going to completely continue to innovate on new experiences. So we launched uh, uh, Shopwise, which is... Um, a shopping, you know, deals around me kind of app, and we're relaunching a, uh, a tablet version of it. And, you know, we no media or anything behind it, and it's got, you know, half a million users, and that's a lot in Canada. I mean, it's a sign. But, uh, and it's an incredibly popular app, and people love it, and they talk about it, and we have a deal site that feeds into that. So, but that's our strategy from restaurants, from shopping, for all the big experiences, because I'm not going to make the bets on what's going to pop. Right. Okay, and then we also have an API strategy, like we, act, we commonly have an API strategy, where we syndicate all this information for free to power other people's apps. You know, but as long as we can track the leads that are generated, it's more ROI right. for our advertisers. So we can't, you have to, as I said, it's our biggest investment right now, because a directory business is really consumers and advertisers, and if we lose the consumer... Um, You're a reseller. We're a reseller, and well, resellers don't make money. No. You know? and I think that's one of the discussions you know? that's so lost in this conversation is that uh, we're focused so much on sales productivity yeah, and customer so acquisition. When, when people, let me show a hands in here. If I just said, 
we're talking about product today, would you assume it's consumer product? Raise your hand. It's advertiser products, right? It's all advertiser products. So what's interesting in this business, obviously this is making money from advertising and SMBs, but the consumer side of it is, you know, are we just going to relegate that to the aggregators like Google and everyone else? It, it seems, in, it, by, from afar at least, that's how it looks. Well, Google, Google share in Canada is not increasing, it's mm -hmm. decreasing. Okay, because there's a lot of innovation, lots of different experiences that people are using, not the standard search experience. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a little bit more, I mean, think of Facebook and Facebook vis-a-vis -vis Google and getting recommendations for local, you know, places. I mean, that eats into the Google search volume, right? Yeah. So it's possible. Okay, so I, I, I honestly... But is, is Google even the biggest threat? I mean, is, uh, are there... No, they're not a threat per se, they're a partner, well, right? Well, uh, okay, but... but <laughs> A from, really from, from the part. consumer experience, is it more uh, vertical experiences that are, you know? Yeah, so I think the consumer experience is the, and it's the funny thing there, if we, as businesses, if we're not engaged in the consumer experience and we're just either syndicating data or content and not engaging with the consumer, I mean, Christ, that's why Overture got crushed. Right. We had no consumers, right? And whoever owns the consumer, whether it be, you know, in specific verticals or in a broad kind of basis is going to make more money. So what's the future of the horizontal product then? I mean, you say yours is growing usage, but um, yeah, I, I it think seems so. like all the energy is around apps and verticals and, and other we, Well, we, if, you, if you look at YP, there's some vertical integrations on there today that, that power some pretty good experiences. So if you look at like the gas prices piece, right, that drives a lot of frequency, especially in the app. If you look at being able to book uh, through our partnership with OpenTable, if you look at being able to go to Fandango, like, we, we, we see this. We, we look at that, though, as where we're trying to kind of find the right set of capabilities that, this is going to sound weird when we're talking about verticals that are more horizontal, right? Mm -hmm. But you can, you, can, uh, you can kind of put these things in buckets around scheduling, commerce, availability, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of quoting, things like that. So, so we're, we see those as kind of, we can take out whole sets of categories with the right partners and with the right capabilities. So you'll see a lot more vertical uh, experiences across YP. Mm -hmm. But we're doing this in a way that's going to scale, right? Because you're, you're also competing against well-funded startups and, and vertical players like OpenTable, right? right. So you, you, you have to kind of pick your spot in terms of how you play and compete. Yeah, so OpenTable is actually a service for the advertiser side of the universe with a huge benefit for the consumer. Right. So that's an example of a, a wonderful partnership. Is S is still there? Is he, he is. He's the yeah, so another Overture guy. So, the, so you obviously have to partner. We call it layers of content or, or integration mm -hmm. of data sources. So you kind of have to do that. But I think, I think I'd, we're not going to give up on the primary consumer experience because... Uh, let's face it, that's not, a, that's not a great future for any digital media company. Well, so to piggyback on Charles's com question there, um, what, you're not giving up, can you win? And what does victory look like? What, what does the two, five-year horizon look like? Winning survival. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it, is it, I mean, can you? It's growing share, it's yeah. growing share and providing high, at the end of the day, the consumer attention is all about driving high quality leads, right? And so if we're driving high quality leads through either our syndication or our owned and operated you know, apps and horizontal properties and mobile sites and websites that we build people, building that ecosystem to generate leads and report on it in a coherent fashion that shows the ROI for the advertisers, it's a very, very sustainable business. Right. And we can be media neutral on that business. So if we can't, for example, build our owned and operated media this is true anyway, right? I mean, we resell SEM products and what have you. But if we don't have enough owned and operated, we could use lots of media to generate the leads. Right. Because the, the same, the advertiser proposition is exactly the same as it's always been. Give me high quality consumers, give me, give me business yep. for the least amount of effort. Right. I think so, the, the important thing you touched on though is that the YPs and probably us more, more than some of the others, we, the Yellow Page guys, we have demand side strength in the ecosystem, right? Yeah. So, if you look at OpenTable as an example of how that model is really great, you give something that's really useful to an advertiser that turns out being really useful to a consumer. And so strategically, we see our pipe to the advertiser, whether that's for content, for data, for commerce, for functionality, that turns into our kind of high ground in this overall space. Yeah, right. and you gotta be really careful about that though. With a large sales force that does talk to, you know, we have goals, we talk to our advertisers a couple of times a year uh, with this sales force, 300,000 some odd advertisers. Um, you just can't make that a reseller channel either. Right. Right, because everyone's like, oh, I want you to s sell this for this, and it's like, whatever. Well, and that's been the, uh, the, the 
strategy for on the advertiser product side. You've gone and partnered, historically you've gone and partnered with vendors who can provide those capabilities. Your sales team has resold them. The analogy I've always made is the API strategy is to you know, open up your content to let other developers go build apps and products on top of it is, is a similar, you, I can, you know, you can kind of see where those two worlds come together. That wasn't a very successful strategy for CityGrid or for City Search, obviously. Um, you know, it sounded really good in the beginning and then all of a sudden uh, we, we, we can see what happened to them. Well, um, you've, got, you've got too many people splitting up the margin. Right. You have too right. many people splitting up the margin. And, and again, you don't build your brand, you don't build anything that's defensible. Right. Um, so, and I know we keep talking about this and, and I'll, I'll leave this point alone um, after no, this no, last question. Keep but on going. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to beat this one. The horse is still alive. This, yeah, this, barely, is, this is barely. important to you. Yeah, so. no, but, but are you going to go build by partner, partner being kind of the API structure? I, I do get this sense, even though I, I don't feel like you're both willing to kind of put your neck out there and admit it, but that you have a belief you can win. And, and, that, and that's great. And you can, you know, you, you can right, win. So in, I, in I get one? Fuck yeah. <laughs> that's two, by the way. <laughs> no, the other one's I knew I could count on you for a couple of these. One and one half. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one we're half. not screwing around. I mean, yeah. we're not here to screw around, right? Yeah. I right. mean, so, so all of the above, by the way, build, partner, there's an evolution of these products, right? We have to make them work all together so it's not people choosing, oh, maybe a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I mean, there has to be something coherent about it, yep. how you package it, what are the benefits uh, that you're gonna do, and then how it all gets pulled together. So yeah, so we're gonna do all the above uh, as well as build it, right? Because yeah. uh, let's be clear, uh, you know, if you're not getting a high margin, you're using somebody else's media, cutting that in two is not a sustainable model either. Right. right. And I think just, just to kind of illustrate that, if you look at the vast majority of our digital revenue, mm -hmm. that's powered by, you know, YP traffic, yep. that's powered by YP capabilities. Yep. We've got a, you know, a, a engineering team of over 300 people, right, yep. with people, that come, people who come from great, you know, digital backgrounds, so right. we're, we're serious about it. We're going to yep. make a run in it. Great. Wow, Do over 300? Turn it to yeah. audience. What questions? is the CIO? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, like 50. One, <laughs> if, if we got about 15 minutes left, and if one hands go up in the air, we'll get you a microphone. I have one Twitter question so far, and it's, uh, it's for you, Paul. Um, you reference Google not growing in Canada, so the question is, um, you know, what are the other verticals the consumer is using? Where is that? Well, uh, not consumer look, engagement going. So I'm not saying anything bad about Google, whatever. But the but that, <laughs> but don't get scared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, no, it's not, it's, it's, there are experiences, whether it be Facebook, whether it be specific verticals, specific applications that are taking more of users' attention. Mm -hmm. Now, the new generation of users, of which I would not potentially put myself in, they're spending a lot more time connected in, in a mobile universe. But I'm talking about the transfer, it's two things, it's the transformation to mobile and then the fragmentation within mobile. Mm -hmm. Okay, we heard this morning from Matt that you know, there's, there's a category of people that check their status on Facebook continuously. Yeah. I hope, I don't want to employ those people. No, you but, don't want them working for you, but. Yeah. But, but <laughs> what I'm saying is that's, that's the fragmentation of user attention, and user attention is what you're selling to advertisers. Right. So it's, it's, it's almost a, it's a truism. We can't ignore that, and it's been acknowledged through all of the moves in mobile that Facebook has done, as well as Google, and attempting to stay engaged with that multi-screen um, audience. And so as we can participate, there's nothing, well-funded startups, I mean, we spend a lot of money on tech, okay? And I'm a startup guy, and we could start up lots of businesses with the amount of money we spend on tech at YPG. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're at a disadvantage to well-funded startups, per se. We're at a disadvantage because our pace of change yeah. isn't the imperative to do it isn't there. I mean, one of the biggest cultural transformations we've done at YPG in the mobile teams is just moving to strict scrum-based agile. It's really a transformation for yeah. people. Wow, I have to work every day and sit down with developers and stuff like that. So it's, it's awesome because it, it reinforces that. Every two weeks we're launching something. Let's get going here. And that, that's the DNA that you need in this universe. So you can build it. You ever think about like physically removing these teams from the environment and putting them, does that make a difference? Or? Uh, it would. I think you can do it within an existing, 
I just I could tell so many stories about YPG, but you know, there's like corporate know, policies. So you can't <laughs> hang things and put stuff on the windows <laughs> and stuff like that. So I basically there ignored no all that. Table policy. Yeah, no, we have foosball tables. Mm -hmm. You decided not to follow the rules. Yeah, I know. Oh. You find that hard to believe, mm -hmm. but but you know, so there was no free coffee or sodas or snacks or anything. It's like, how the hell do you recruit people without that? I mean, so it was a very old IT kind of mentality. So that's those are very easy things to flip. Right. Uh, and you just do them. Those are easy rules to break. Yeah, yeah. they're easy rules to break, and you know, you know, beg forgiveness, never yeah. ask permission. I want to shift gears a little bit. Um, we had talked about uh, we're ad products a bit. We talked about you know not giving up on the consumer. But yesterday, there was a big discussion about you know in ten years this conference will all be about cloud-based products. It's all about the SaaS products and about the idea. Sort of Matt Booth talked about there's the advertising bucket and then there's the sort of services bucket. Mm -hmm. Where are you guys on the services side and, and this whole idea of you get somebody locked in on that platform service that they can't do without, then you have that customer for the, you know, forever essentially. Yeah. I mean, where are you at, with that? We look at our product portfolio in three big buckets, mm -hmm. right? So presence, which we heard a lot about today, is, a, is the foundation for every, every business, right? We don't care if it's a national business or a small business. Mm -hmm. You've got to manage your presence. And, and that's, it could be everything from listing management and your website and content distribution, all those good things and media that you put on top of that. Then we look at performance and leads, and that's, that's a big, the majority of our business today. But there is this, this piece, and if, if you guys go look at the, at the uh, MyBook features and the new YP app, you'll see this, which is how do we not just kind of send people leads but send them relationships? How do we get them to connect? Mm -hmm. How do we get merchants and consumers to have these richer connections? How do we help them manage and build their lists, right? Like mm -hmm. this is the biggest thing you'll see when, when you look at small businesses is they don't do a good job of managing their customer base. And part of that's because you have guys that are on the service side that maybe only touch a customer once or twice, but you're probably not getting referrals if you don't manage that. Mm -hmm. And you have other businesses with, with more frequent relationships and they just kind of let those things go. Right, mm -hmm. and, and so we think there's huge value there around retention, remarketing, and those sorts of things. And so, you can get a sneak peek of that at the MyBook feature in the YP app. How many, how many times do you go to a local vendor and you get the little paper, you know, you Punch do nine out. and you get one free? Yeah. Right? Less and less, but. Less and less, yeah. but I mean, but people like Square and whatever, mm -hmm. they're, they're building this infrastructure so that the CRM for the SMB right. can exist. Yeah. And so we're yeah. cognizant of that as where the world is going. Now, there is a, uh, Definition, not definitional, it is kind of definitional. There's around 25% of SMBs that'll engage in this sort of thing, and around 75% that it's just too much work. Yep. Okay, so, so for that 25%, that's a big marketplace. And integrating more products to make what we do stickier, mm -hmm. okay, more products and services. But realize, products and services are products and services margin. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, you're, and if you're, you have to be incredibly efficient, scalable, automated, blah, 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 because customer service for complicated products like this can chew up all your margin if you're not careful. And you want to have an extraordinary customer service experience because you're helping them make their businesses better, okay? So it's, it's, a, it's almost like you're training them to run a business, okay, mm -hmm. setting up a platform for that, and then the barriers to switching potentially are very low. Sound familiar? Yep. It's AdWords. Yep. Right? So you build, it, you build the capability and the cognizance of that in the advertisers, and then if you're just offering them services where they can export mm -hmm. their contact list and their history and go do somewhere else for $9.99 a month, it's, yeah. it's a different model. But the thing that you, you have, the access to consumers you always have, okay? And, and helping, making it stickier via services, that's a, that's a, it's, it seems like it's obvious, but it's an unproved assertion in my mind. It's, but I, I will say, and it is going to be a very tough nut to crack in getting over the, the kind of the effort issue with a small business, right, mm -hmm. is, is a big yeah. deal. But once you get those hooks into the back office, back to the open table example, Absolutely. It, it can also be a yeah. material driver for the consumer experience, yeah. right? It's, it's definitely, the hooks for the consumer point of view have to exist. But from an, from an advertiser product point of view, mm -hmm. it's, it, it can create stickiness because it's like, whoa, 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 they're putting it all together for 100 bucks a month, you know, until somebody comes up with an interesting feature that you don't have that's, you know, 20 bucks a month, right? And so I think there's... So you're, you're challenging the, the high switching... The, the high yeah, I, I just don't, I, I mean, people say that, but, mm -hmm. but there's no, if you have media and user retention, there's no switching. They still right. have to come to you. It's yeah. the leads that right? matter. The leads they matter. They care about new okay? business. And yeah. then what you do with the leads, to me, that's proving the value of the leads more than anything. So and if uh, you're proving the value of leads, they'll stay with you. Right. 
So, uh, however you're getting it, whatever interface you get. Yeah, them. look, I yeah. would love to set up telephone systems for small businesses and, you know, in the VoIP universe and like an automated CRM for that. And, you know, constant, you know, the constant contacts of the world constantly remarketing to them. And those are all incredibly valuable services that SMBs in general probably won't pay for, but some segment of them will. And so it's not, not saying not you wouldn't have those as capabilities, but the real benefit of that is proving the ROI of whatever the spend is on to acquire the, um, right. the consumers. Yep. Any other questions from the audience? I'd like to maybe switch gears and talk about channels for a few minutes. Um, you know, there's a lot of discussion. There's been some references to the, the big, for example, Hub, the reference yesterday from Elite Reach Local about Hub, HubSpot, you know, all that inbound leads it sort of makes them able to manage their business with a much smaller sales channel. Is the large, talk about the large sales channel and the, his, the future of it. Is 2,000 reps on the street sustainable <laughs> over time? Uh, given, you know, cost of customer acquisition, you know, given the churn in the, in the customer base, uh, given all the competition, you know, all the changes that we've been talking about, right. is the channel going to have to fundamentally change? It, over it, time. It, it has to and it already is. Yeah. And, and rep productivity is, is, I think, for any of the directory guys, is a kind of key issue, right? Mm -hmm. So as you're dealing with your print decline and you're, and you're investing in your digital products, and this goes back to the decision support for the sales guy, is how do you get that guy to be two or three times more um, productive? Mm -hmm. we, we, see, we, we can see daylight when we look through that tunnel. We think there's a, there's a way to get there. Um, we, we fundamentally believe that we're going to be able to maintain a big enough sales force to address the, the customer base we have and grow it. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've already done that um, since leaving AT&T. We haven't reduced our sales force at all. We've driven rep productivity. We're growing customers. We're mm -hmm. growing revenue. So have you been shifting uh, within channels, for example, more telephone, less face-to-face? -face, no major shifts yet. Mostly, mostly just uh, better management of that channel and, more, and the right uh, decision support solutions for those reps and for the sales management. Mm -hmm. What are you, Paul? Yeah, it's, it's, a pretty, it's a very interesting question because um, people are like, well, that's a huge liability. I think our sales channel is actually our largest asset at YPG um, because we can sell the hell out of everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, way beyond what we used to be able to digitally fulfill. So it's always been that. I mean, when I, that's one of the reasons I went to YPG. It's like the big problem is we're selling too much. <laughs> okay, I like that. Um, but, but the productivity of a rep is incredibly important, right? So I, I think of selling time. How much time are you, you know, selling? And so simple concepts like appointment setters and two tiers selling. Well, on that point, I think we did a, I'm going to show a little bit, I'm previewing a survey, I'm going to show a little bit of tomorrow, and it's typically around 25% of a rep's time is what we're hearing. Yeah, that's well, absolutely right. actually spent selling. Yep, and that's and then you right. compare that to Mark Robert's presentation yesterday and you know, here is an engineer who's running a sales force and has wired it from start to finish and they are incredibly productive, uh, inc incredibly data driven. You know, how does... You yeah. Know, the, so our second largest, yeah. I said the consumer experience, our second largest investment that we're working on is the sales enablement. Yeah. Okay. And I think of it both as efficiency, meaning mm -hmm. cut out all the non-sales work. And then effectiveness, how, how do you pitch the right products to actually get the sale? Um, and both you know, are, are incredibly fruitful areas of investment. Yeah. So if you have a sales rep that's you know, spending two or three hours a day selling, and it's five or six hours a day with all of these that's tools, right. it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, but you will get a revenue pop. Okay, yep. and, but that's, and you'll get a very, happier rep. It's been very persistent at about 25%, hasn't it, over the years? It's, it's a, and there's a lot of reasons for that, mm -hmm. and I think there are cultural reasons for that as well, mm -hmm. right? Because, and, yeah. because you have to, like, prepare, and it takes a long time to do the, the, the prep package, and you're going to go talk to them, and then you make the appointment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been on... Time coaching times. And yeah, and, and then there's coaching times, and then you spend two hours... You know, Travel. with well, you spend an hour traveling, and then you spend two hours with the customer mm -hmm. explaining how the digital world works, and yeah. then they they renew their print ad and walk away, right? So it's it's a very it's an interesting process, but but it's it's almost a truism if we make you know guided selling and cut out the inefficient crap that they have to deal with, it's going to help. And mm -hmm. and I don't think there's a limit. It's like uh, 
Matt Booth used to say, it's like, there's no way you can make money. You know, you've got so much money walking around with a computer and all that stuff that it's impossible. Well, if you can actually sell really great high margin products very, very quickly, and then follow up on them quickly. But it's hasn't the trend been that it, it, there's more time to close, more calls to close? You know. Yeah, I think I think the I think it's a little bit short-sighted mm -hmm. um, because I'll give you a great example. We uh, launched a bunch of mobile placement products um, actually a quarter after we wanted to, uh, mm -hmm. and we got it in our sales channel and we prepped everyone on it and it was a great go-to-market plan and trained everyone up. And now we're we've already made up and we're ahead of plan on this product and it's going gangbusters. So because they can explain it very simply, it's, an, it's a cool product, they got a lot of ROI from it, you know, 40% of our lead generation is mobile now, mm -hmm. and so they can see it just like that and people buy it. And is and, it integrated into your other solutions? Yeah. And, 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 and that's all part of it as well. Like just the, the other comment that Mark made yesterday is, um, in the old days you'd implement Salesforce for your sales team and IT or the CTO wouldn't be involved at all. Now you're very much involved in that. Absolutely. And you're removing or you're reducing the number of clicks for a salesperson from 17 to three. Right. That's a productivity gain just in itself. And it's because it's wired and it's, it's being run by the CTO and products. Right? Yeah, so I think a lot of that um, is too important to be left uh, to IT in general. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because you're gonna implement, so we had a pretty, pretty messy, we still do in fact, we're phasing it out, a pretty messy Siebel implementation, which is, you know, 100 clicks to do anything. Yeah. It's not, you know, treat the internal user like you would treat a consumer from that's a UI a point. point of view. And that's yes. so that's the, you know, where, you know, where are the designers that are designing the tools for use? And now yeah. we have that these are all mobile tools we're building, and it is the consumer designers building it, yeah. right? And that, that simple switch, all of a sudden it's like, Wow, this is fun to use. I can collect all this content that easily from the right. advertiser. Right. Awesome. And my, and my company's investing in me, and I feel yeah, like I, I, I gosh, I have right. an iPhone now. Right. And I, and I don't look like I'm in the dark ages. Right. And so it's it's pretty mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty it has huge benefits. Yeah. So we're just we're, about out of time. Maybe a quick final thought or. Uh, yeah, so you know, we, we've talked. you, Darren? You've talked too much. No, well, I was, hoping, I was gonna say give me the last word, but that might never happen, so. Um. <laughs> Speak up, Darren. No, no, I think, I think this is a uh, incredibly inter interesting time in the local space. If you, if you look at what's happening on the marketing automation side, if you look what's happening kind of more on the distribution side, right, if you look, and, and some of those things are merging like you see with the listing management guys. The consumer piece, the channel, the advertiser, um, it's more complex today, I think, than it, than it ever has been. But I, I also think that the technology is coming together in a way to where, like we said earlier on the sales issue, the light, we, we see light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, we think we have a, an important role to play in addressing fragmentation in, in doing this consultation. I think that the, uh, it, was, it was said by the um, signpost, right? They were talking about how it's not quite ready for do it yourself, especially once you go past a certain level of complexity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we think we have a role to play and we think we've got the capabilities to go in. Yeah, it's a huge role to play. I mean, we call it the 360 strategy pretty much like everyone else, but it's, it's way too complicated for the SMB today. So someone coming in and doing that and integrating it and telling you the ROI story, there's a, I think there's a total role for that um, because we're already there on the street doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and so my final thought would be we're, we're not dead yet. <laughs> okay. There you go. Good, good way to end it. Okay. Thanks. Please join me in thanking the panel. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.